but I'm going to go with this, all right, first. Uh, in fact, look in your Bible to a scripture that we read last week. First uh, Peter 4, 7. First Peter 4, 7. It says, but the end, okay, I'll wait till you all find it, or it, 1 Peter 4, 7, but the end of all things is at hand, therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers, okay, and that was one of the scriptures, you need to have that underlined in your, word, in your Bible, very important scripture, and I want you to know that as I was uh, praying this week, for my son, Bubba. Some of you know who Bubba is and some of you don't. I was talking to him about how very close we are to the coming of the Lord. Amen. And, uh, and hearing his comments. And as I was praying, <clears throat> the Lord brought this to me very, very seriously to the point that I wrote it down in big letters. All right? Would become serious. And the Lord told me that as I pray for the different ones, family, friends, church family, that we would become serious. Amen. And I said, hmm, that word is in the, in the scriptures. So I got my theological uh, word book out to look up the word to see what does serious mean. It means earnest, sober. Not joking. Requiring careful consideration. Contemplative. Meditative. Thoughtful. And the Lord told me, because he puts all kinds of different ones on my mind. My heart, not my mind. Can't trust my mind. My mind flitters here and there. Does your mind flitter all over the place? When I can find it. If you can find your mind. <laughs> find it. After you get to a certain age, your mind is out doing more than it ever has. Just your mind. No, my heart, my spirit. And the Lord told me to begin to pray for the people of God to become serious. And that scripture is that if my people that are called by my name would pray would humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. He didn't say the world. He right. said, my people. Right. Amen. And so as I was praying for the different ones, were the people of God, and he said, you be praying that they would be serious in their walk with God. And I said, aha. And so I, I thought I would bring that out before you tonight and that we check our own hearts to see how serious we are and remember the, the meanings of it, earnest and sober, not joking, requiring careful consideration, contemplative, hmm, contemplative, meditative, Meditate and thoughtfulness, not only thinking of God one time a week or maybe twice on a Wednesday night and on a Sunday. Are you following me? But being very contemplative, very meditative, thoughtful about God continually, even through the night, day and night. Okay, and so he brought that to me, and so I said, okay, I will bring it before the people, uh, those that are in my class, to be serious. And when you're praying for your different, your family, the different ones that you're praying for, that they would become serious about the things of God, about God. And that's what I wanted Bubba to hear, because he was telling me, Things, you know, just, uh, I, I, 
I think Jesus all the time. And I know that's good, but I want him to become serious yes. about serving God. <coughs> serious. And if he's serious about serving God, guess what else? It'll be known throughout his family, his own children and his grandchildren. That's right. Isn't that right? That's right. Yeah. I, I, I just wanted him to hear that. And so, anyway, now as we go, and I was praying, the Lord also brought another message to me about something that I needed to mention to you again because I really talked a lot about prayer last week and we're going to talk more about prayer and the watchman prayer. But he also said, <laughs> I said, oh yes, Lord, I hear that. At the very beginning, I think it was last Thursday, he brought right after the Wednesday night service about praise and worship to our God. I mean, I, I, ladies, I am not working anymore, and I put a lot of requests at him, day and night. Not just a few, but I'm praying at different intervals through the night, and all through the day. And he said, Joanne, where's your praise? And your thanksgiving. And I says, oh, yes. In fact, Psalms 50, 23, whoever offers praise glorifies me. <coughs> and to him who orders his conduct aright will show the salvation of God. That's just one scripture. And then one in Hebrews. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifices of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. To thank him, he said, give me <clears throat> thanks and praise. Not just every once in a while, but you do that throughout the day. You give me praise and thanksgiving. And uh, 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 verse 16 there, Hebrews 13, it says, but do not forget to do good and <laughs> to share <laughs> with those that, uh, for such sacrifices as well pleasing to God. But uh, hear that. The sacrifices of praise to God, that is the fruit of our lips. And you know what? Then he gave me another uh, uh, scripture out of Psalms. Psalms 150, out of the message, okay? <laughs> Don, you know I was having, because I, I, I'd already talked to her about that, out of the message. And the message is a paraphrase, okay? And I said, oh, yeah. I will use this. Praise, at first, it's, it is the halal, hallelujah, tehillah, praise. Okay, I've learned the different ways of praising, and this 150 is tehillah, praise. And it's halal, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise. All right, halal, hallelujah, how it starts out. Praise God in his holy house of worship. Praise him under the open skies. Praise him for his acts of power. <laughs> Praise him for his magnificent greatness. Praise with a blast on the trumpet. Praise by the strumming of soft strings. Guitar. The bass. Okay. Praise him with castanets and a dance. Can we praise him with a dance? Oh, yeah. Yes. I can praise him with a dance all the time. I, I can do it in church even. Moving around. Dancing before the Lord. <clears throat> Does he say to dance? He did. And he says it more than one place. Praise him with the banjo and the flute. <laughs> it, it thrills me because I have a family that plays banjos and flutes and bass and guitars, and the whole family is playing. And that is how a good way to praise the Lord with all those instruments. Praise Him with cymbals, even. Yeah. <laughs> and big bass drums. Ah, praise Him with the fiddles and the mandolin. Wait till Micah Salem hears that. He's the mandolin champion of the state of Arizona. Yeah. But you can praise Him with mandolins. <laughs> Yes, let every living, breathing creature praise God. 
Hallelujah. Halal. Ah, that was a good chapter for the Lord to bring me to. He said, it, it, this is part of your praying, Joanne, is to give me praise and thanksgiving even before you see the request being answered. <clears throat> I, uh, in fact, uh, I'll just tell you this too, because I was having difficulty praising uh, uh, this last few weeks because I've had so many different emergencies come in on my home. And I'm not, I know all of us have emergencies. But I have a sister up in Colorado who was evacuated, first of all, because of the flood. And then her landlord, she's lived there for seven, seven years. And the landlord come to her and said, I want you to move. I need your house. And so we have prayed, okay? That has been prayer through the night even. She and I with Texas, praying, all right? And this landlord giving her one more week and then you're out of there. And here this, almost 70 years old, trying to pack things up to get, ready, to, to get herself out. And the, the Lord was telling me that during that time, you give me praise and thanksgiving because I am working in this with her. And she is learning that I can be trusted. <clears throat> she is learning <clears throat> that he can be trusted. And did you know he sent her three texts last night giving her only a couple of days to get out. Three texts. And she, she texts me and calls me. And then she texts him back. So nicely put. So sweet. And said, no. I cannot. Do you know what I'm saying? And I told her, I said, that was real good, Joanne, uh, June, but Joanne would me, <coughs> I would want to go and say, no! <laughs> but for her to do it so gent gentle. <laughs> yes. And all we were just praising God. She was just praising God. And I said, that's what we're going to be doing, is just praising God. Because he come to her door today. And she smiled at him <coughs> and said, I am so sorry. I cannot move until they have that apartment ready for me. And that could be up to two weeks. <laughs> So just be patient and rent you another place till I am out of here. And so it's only been a couple of weeks that he's only given her and I was wondering what was the legal thing. But the thing that God was trying to show me is to praise him and be grateful for what he is already doing and that he is doing. And uh, I want you to know this is this is something that he gave me with that, okay? Because I know it's not just me that has difficulties, all right? It's not just her, but we all have our difficulties of one thing or another. <clears throat> one thing or another. But listen to this that the Lord gave me. Is my walk with God all about emotions and feelings? Or is it driven by faith and the word? When we have days we don't feel the victory of our faith, do we continue to serve him? Have you ever had a day that you didn't feel the victory of your faith, that it was not coming about like it was supposed to? Right? Or do I let my feelings hurt my faith? Class, think about that. Do I let my feelings hurt my faith? Strong faith is based on the Word of God. And next week we're going to start, we're going to talk about the language of faith. 
Without faith, it is impossible to please him. He that comes to God must believe that he is who he said he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so strong faith is based on God's word. Do we believe it or not? Amen. Yes. And so I want you to hear this. God will smile on our responses to bad days. He's not up there wringing his hands. <laughs> but he will smile upon our response to bad days when our spirits are low, yet we pray <clears throat> and give him praise and thanksgiving. And we say, God, I am not at my best today, but all I have is still yours, and I still trust in you. Yes, can you see him smiling? Yes, he will smile at us when things are going tough, but we can still say, I still trust in you. I'm not at my best today. Things are not going good. But I still trust in you. I still trust in you. All that I have is yours. And that's what God wants us to become, is to allow him to be God and that we trust him. And he gave that to me after uh, uh, the different things that was coming into my little sister, Junie. I call her my little sister, but she's only a year and a half from me. And she does have family that live up there. And yet, having so many difficulties. In fact, she called me a couple of nights ago and says, Joanne, you won't believe what happened. I said, what, honey? Did the landlord come? <laughs> and she said, no, the police stopped me. Oh, dear. She said, I didn't know it, but my license plates were expired by months. I said, oh, June, you haven't been looking, have you? She said, no. <laughs> and she said, in my glove compartment, I couldn't find proof of the insurance. <laughs> the police were saying, oh, we're s I'm so sorry. He said, I won't, I won't charge you with not ha having a, a license plate. But he said, I'll have to charge you for not having the, the insurance. And I said, Junie, it's OK, honey. I better go out and look at my car, OK? <laughs> I said, it's OK. I, I'm going to go check my car and make sure my license plates are all up the car. And I said, I'll get all my stuff out of my glove com compartment and make sure I have everything in there that I need. God is good. And she called me the next day and says, oh, Joanne, the Lord even provided the money for me to pay for my license plates. She said, everything is working out so good. And I said, yes, that's the God that we serve. That's the God that we serve. And so I know that there are difficulties in our lives that require us to pray and to believe God and to have faith in God and we are going to look at in fact the next two weeks we're going to look at uh, learning uh, the language of faith and the mystery of unanswered prayer mm -hmm. would you like to look at that the mystery of un unanswered prayer we're going to look at that before we're finished all right we have looked at the watchman oh I can't believe the time that's kind of like <laughs> okay all right very quickly uh, I, I, Isaiah 52.8 and uh, I think Don this is the one that you read yeah. will you read it again yeah. 52.8 read it again sure will. listen your watchmen lift up their voices they shout joyfully together for they will see with their own eyes when the Lord restores Zion yes the watchmen that are here in this assembly of God church we'll see eye to eye can't you uh, God is so good as he brings this congregation together and brings us in union together and prayer together. It's, this is what God wants us to see eye to eye. 
this congregation as, uh, as he begins to work out things in our life. Okay, I, I want to start right here real quickly. Supplications, uh, the first uh, scripture that we were studying is pray, praying always with all prayer and supplications in the spirit, being watchful to this end. Okay, supplication, you know what supplication means? With all supplication, means to ask for something, to present a request to him. I mean, make a definite request of supplication. It says in the scriptures, uh, if you found yourself being anxious, okay, uh, like Sister Junie and me being anxious over her, the scriptures in uh, Philippians 4, 6 and 7, it says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Let your request be made known <laughs> to God. And then the what? The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our mind and our hearts through Christ Jesus. Yes. And I when I catch myself being anxious about something, I hear Holy Spirit say, be not anxious for anything, but with prayer and make the request. The request, supplication, the request be made known. And then the, uh, uh, with thanksgiving, and then the peace of God will come and guard you. Okay, one other thing I want to before I... Uh, go to that subject of praying in the spirit is that I, I read one time a story of a man who went to heaven and uh, in, in the place where he was at they were showing him, the angels were there were a room full of file cabinets oh so many file cabinets and he was going through each one, I mean touching them and opening them up and he asked the angel what are these? And he said, these are needs of the people that they never requested. Mm -hmm. Did you understand that? They never voiced their prayer out to me. And so I said, oh my goodness. Ah. He said, you do not have because you do not ask. Ask. Okay, very quickly. We are told to pray in the Spirit. The Spirit of God knows the mind of God. We are to pray in the Spirit. And in John 14, verse 12 and 16 uh, to 16, uh, I have it in the Amplified Bible, but I'm only going to read uh, uh, the last word. He said, he, no, I'll, I'll read 12. I assure you most solemnly and tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, Amplified Bible, he will himself be able to do all the things that I do and will even do greater things than these because I go to the Father. And then he said that he would go to the Father and he would ask the Father, verse 16, and he said, and I will give you another comforter. And in the Amplified Bible, you know what, that, I have to, I love it. I look it up all the time because I talk to Holy Spirit in me all the time. I say, Holy Spirit, you're in here. You are my teacher. You are my helper. You are my advocate. You're my strengthener, my standby. I call him teacher. I said, you, you teach me everything. And this is who the Holy Spirit is. He is in me and on me and with me. And if you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, I, I, that, that's one of the things that I, I, we must, we must recognize the need for a vital encounter with the Holy Spirit. I, I mean it. We must know a, about a vital encounter with the Holy Spirit. And uh, the scripture that I want us to read very quickly is in Romans 8, verse 26 and 27. And this is out of the New King James Version. He said, Likewise, the Spirit helps in our weaknesses. Okay, you got it? For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. 
Now he who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Pray in the Spirit. Okay? That to pray in the Spirit, there's a lot of times I do not know how to pray. I do not know how. And so I pray in the Spirit a lot because I do not know exactly how to pray for the person that I'm praying for. Not sure what they need because I can just say, oh, bless them, bless them, bless them. But the Lord might say, no, they don't need that blessing that you're talking about. They need a good spanking. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I do pray for my family and I just say, Lord, give them a good shake. But then I pray in the Spirit, God knows exactly what they need. Amen. Are you following me? If we pray in the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit knows exactly what is needed in that particular situation. And so I do pray in the Spirit a lot. And uh, the New Living Translation, it says that the Holy Spirit helps us in our distresses. Right. For we don't even know what we should pray for, nor how we should pray, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. And the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony. In harmony with God's will. That's something that we must understand. The Spirit of God knows the will of God in different lives. Are you following me? Praying in the Spirit is very, very, very powerful. And we need to recognize the need for a vital encounter with the Holy Spirit. We must realize that we need to have the Holy Spirit in our life. Uh, okay. Uh, I want to do one other thing before I hand out all this work here. <laughs> okay. The perseverance of the warrior's prayer. Uh, it go to your chapter 6 in your Ephesians. Uh, uh, that is the verse that we, we started out with. That uh, 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 verse, pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance, supplication for all saints. Uh, I, I wanted you to see this. The warrior's prayer continues steadfastly. The warrior does. Continue steadfastly in prayer. We don't quit. We don't faint. And we don't yield to distractions. Shall I say that again? We don't quit. We don't faint. We don't yield to distractions. We don't get detoured. The warrior. We pray fervently. Now listen to this. Then we slack up. And then we forget. Then the enemy accuses us of being unfaithful, which causes us not to want to start again in prayer. Are you hearing that? That's what one thing that I wanted to mention, is that we get really discouraged with ourselves because we say, yes, I'll... I'm going to pray. I really am going to be steadfast in my prayer. And then we let distractions and several things detour us. And then uh, we get to thinking, I haven't prayed in several days. And then the enemy comes and accuses us of being unfaithful. And then we don't ever start back again. Have you ever been there? You think about it. Because uh, God knows we're not perfect. And I want to tell you this. Don't be discouraged with your prayer life. And I have here, prime the pump on my notes. Prime the pump. And you know what that is? Read some books on prayer. I have got shelves and shelves of books on prayer. There are so many books on prayer. Prayer. Find you a book on prayer. Prime the pump. Get encouraged. 
about praying and the necessity of praying. And I've got some good stuff here for you to have, and we will kind of look through it together. Dale, you come here and get this, and Don, you come and get this little sack. Okay. All right, this, everyone gets one of these, and everyone gets one of these. Man. Oh, I'm sorry, Don. Oh, I'm okay. Why don't we do this? Okay. She's coming up for uh, tips. <coughs> I want you to take a look at it because we're going to look through this together. All right. I want you to, I want you to have this at home. Okay. Uh, this will be good. All right. If you'll take it and look at it often and read it often. All right. Prayer is conversation with God. Our conversation. with God has to follow basic rules of conversation, all right? Our conversation with God, and that's talking to God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. We're talking to him. Can, can you think of that? Can you think of him smiling when, when, we're, when we go to him and say, Lord, we're not having a good day, but you, everything I have in me is yours, okay? And so, but we, first of all, becoming aware of the other person. If, have, if I'm having a conversation with Sharon, I must, look, in fact, the Lord has told me many times, my glasses sometimes don't always, I don't get to look up, so I don't get to see your eyes. Do you understand? But basic conversation, we must become aware of the other person that we're talking to. We cannot converse with the Lord until we are aware of Him. Are you following me? We must be aware of Him. Therefore, we begin our prayer with praise plus confession of anything that will hinder our prayer. It's very important. Anything that may be in our hearts that would uh, hinder our praying, our conversation with Almighty God, and say, Lord, I come to you with everything that's in me, and ask him to deal with the things in your life, your thoughts, all right? And with praise and thanksgiving. In prayer, we wait until we have gained an audience with God before we begin our vital communication with him. And we can sense when God has, has appeared or he's right there. You can tell when that anointing is there. And if you can't tell if that anointing is there, you just keep praying, all right? The Holy Spirit is is the one who helps us to know. And besides, he's listening. And we make sure that our hearts are pure or open toward him. Let's say none of us get to the place where we're, we have nothing, you know, that we have a struggle or a problem in our life. But God wants us to come to him, you know, with that uh, thanksgiving and uh, praise. In prayer, we wait until we have gained an audience with God before we begin. Okay, many Christians confuse thoughts with prayer. Okay, many, wait. <laughs> All right, prayer is more than a thought. It is communication of that thought. If you'll just understand that, it'll cause a lot of people think their, their, uh, th their thinking is praying. It is not we must express our prayer, express it out. When we move beyond mere reflection on to God, to an honest response to God, we move from pondering to prayer. You know, a lot of our life is on pondering, thinking about the hardships of different ones. Pondering, instead of opening our mouth and requesting, making requests unto God. We also mistake anxiety and worry for prayer. Did you know that? I know that because it's happened to me many, many times. Anxiety 
and worry is not prayer. We're anxious and we're worried. And so we're voicing it to ourselves. That is not prayer. Thoughts are not prayers until they are expressed. That's the second page. Thoughts are not prayers until they are expressed. Honest evaluation is essential to ongoing success. We must be failing without knowing it. <laughs> honest evaluation. We must honestly evaluate ourselves. This is what this class is about, is our prayer life. Is our prayer life. And what form of prayer do you use the most as you look at all of that? Praise, petition, tongues, rambling, a list. <laughs> Okay, think about it. I've done all of them. <laughs> okay. What form of prayer do you use the most? You take a look at it. Jesus taught his disciples that there was a definiteness of purpose in prayer. He warned them against the hypocrisy of public prayers <laughs> with many words and phrases to impress all the hypocrites that were standing around. That's not what he's looking at. Like I said last week, our prayer may be, God help. Do you know what I'm saying? God help. And I have that before. God help. 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 Okay? And uh, uh, expressing our, our thoughts to God. Expressing our worries and our anxieties to God, about family members, about our own life, about our church family. Yeah, tomorrow is going to be a time of prayer. And uh, uh, we pray for the park outreach on Friday afternoons also, the park outreach. And praying that uh, the Lord gave me a prayer last week about the scriptures in Psalm where it says, shoot your arrows at the enemy and chase them out of this place. And that's how I was praying for the Buckeye Park. Send your arrows out to the enemy and drive them out of this place. And I was around that area. Let him give us prayers to pray. And it's a good time to come together on Thursday morning. Jackie leads the prayer. On Thursday morning we will pray for one another of this church. And uh, that we will pray for the different ones that are in our church. And I have something right here that says, Guide to Praying for Your Church Family. That will be good. Guide to Praying for the Time of Economic Crisis. Would you like to have one? Here. I got I Guide to praying for your church family. Sometimes we need a guide, don't we? Pray for your church family. In fact, look at it. Pray for the spirit of joy and unity to reign throughout the church family. Isn't that a great prayer? To pray that? Take, pick a couple of them out that you can specifically pray for your church family. Uh, on down it says, pray that the congregation will openly welcome and accept visitors. Isn't that good? In fact, I've been uh, praying on Thursday, touching the money bags. I have. The Lord has put it in my heart because we, you know, we get to use this church to pray and to pray for the, uh, the, the outreach at the park. And so I go back and as we circle the building, I lay my hands on the offering bags. And I say, Lord, increase the funds that come into this church. Begin to multiply it. 
begin to bring in that which is necessary. Is that wrong to pray that? No. No. Oh, my goodness. Down at the last it says, pray that the members of the church will be, will be known throughout the community for their integrity. This is good stuff. And if you look down at the bottom, you'll see where I got this from. You see? It comes from Gospel Publishing House. It comes from... Uh, <laughs> it comes from... Uh, the headquarters in Springfield. <laughs> I thought this was very good. Uh, General Counsel. I thought this was very good. And so take the, these different papers home and uh, take a look at the prayer conversation with God this this next week. No, for more than that, keep one. Uh, keep one always out where you can take a look at it and study it. And uh, knowing that prayer is more than just the concern and the worry that we have. Thank you, Jesus. Yes? Sometimes I'll be, you know, struggling with something, and then I'll finally remember to pray about it. And God's like, I thought, I thought you'd never ask. Yeah. That's just, just you know, I thought you would never ask. kind of joking with me, yeah. but at the same time, driving us. No, I think, I think that is probably exactly what he's, yeah. he's waiting. And do you just, you be thinking also of those filing cabinets that are, all those filing cabinets that were full and what he said that these are needs worries of the church but they never prayed they never asked you do not receive unless you ask <coughs> first so Dale did we fill out uh oh. It's big up. Yeah, it's around. Oh, did it go around? Yeah, it's oh, yeah. Thank you. All right. Next, next, uh, next week we will be learning the language of faith. Okay, learning the language of faith. Prayer without faith is words. Okay, it's by faith that we receive, and then the next couple of weeks, I, I'm not sure how much longer he will give, is that we will look at the mystery of an unanswered prayer. We'll take a look at it because uh, we've all had prayers that did not get answered like we were expecting. Okay, let's look at the mystery of that. All right, and uh, that'll be after we've uh, talked about the language of faith. Okay? All right. Good class. Blessings on you. I'm surprised they haven't walked in here for food. They have. They went in on the other side. They're waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting. They're like vultures. <laughs>